Hello, welcome to an introduction to using the ArcGIS program. When you first turn on the computers here at the school, the icon you're going to be looking for will look like this. It's a, a globe with a magnifying glass over top of it. And because our computers list things alphabetically, the screen normally has it housed somewhere up in the top right hand corner. When you first turn it on, this is what you will see. The uh, program running in the background with the dialog box here giving you a couple of different options. The first option that you're going to use here will normally be a new empty map. And this will be where when you're starting off a lab with us, you're going to select the little dot in here and say OK. When you uh, have gone on and you've saved a map and you're coming back to edit it, you'll use this option and ed to open an existing map. And, and that's what I'm going to do for the rest of this tutorial. So the first thing that will happen, in fact, on all of your computers is you'll usually have this tools toolbar sort of floating around someplace. And that's because ArcGIS allows you to customize where you put your icons. Um, you can sort of put it off to the side if you want, or you can make it join over here if you like. My suggestion is just put it up here so that when your teachers come around to try and help you out, they always know where to go to get select the different icons that they might need to help you. Next thing that I think you should all do is make sure that ArcGIS fills the screen. Uh, that allows uh, for you to navigate around your map a lot easier. So when you what you're looking at here is obviously you know you have your all your icons up here that do different tasks and we'll go through different uh, some of those soon. You have where the data is, or this is your data view, if you will. And then over on the left-hand side, we have something we call the table of contents. And what this is, is essentially your legend of your map. And it, this is where we start to control what it looks like on your screen. So in other words, we can change colors here. Um, we can change what's on top of, of other things. With that in mind, you have to understand that ArcGIS has some layers that are lines, some layers that are dots, and some layers that are different areas, or what are commonly known as polygons. You even, at certain times, are going to find that some layers are actually pictures, and that's what this is in the background here. The order that things show up in the table of contents are really important, uh, because ArcGIS will draw this layer first, and then draw this land use layer on top of it, then the school grounds layer on top of that. And so sometimes when you load different layers, you get them showing up in random different places. And if you take a look, this uh, single line street network layer here, which is this layer here, it's all the different roads. If I were to take it in the table of contents and drag it down to the very bottom, you'd actually see that it disappears. And that's because this layer is drawn over top of this layer. And so it's really important. A lot of times what, you, uh, what we tend to do is we actually tend to have uh, dots on top and then lines, and then we have the uh, different, um, different polygon layers. Um, some other tools that I need to introduce you to, and these are going to be ones that you use on a regular basis, just to move around the map. Uh, a couple of them are here. These are our zooming in and out tools. Uh, the fix zoom in out, they sort of sta uh, jump in or out of your page at set intervals. Uh, the zoom out tool is uh, a little bit harder to use, but the zoom in tool tends to be very useful. And in fact, if you click it, you can actually just click on the page and it would be the same as uh, this fixed zoom in tool. So if we were to click that, you'll see that it zooms in at a particular rate. But the magnifying glass also allows us to be very specific about what we want to draw, or what we want to zoom in or, on. And all we have to do is draw a little box around what we want to zoom and that'll fill my data view. Uh, another uh, tool that's really useful for zooming in and out is this tool. So if we made a mistake and we now want to go back to what we were originally looking at, you can just simply click it and it takes us back to the previous zoomed level. Um, and the last one for zooming is this tool here. Sometimes what happens is you zoom in or out way too much 
and you all maybe have a white screen. Uh, we can uh, do that right now by zooming way the heck out. And you'll see that everything sort of disappears in the background. And now what happens a lot of times is people start to get freaked out because, of course, they've lost their map. They haven't, actually. They've just zoomed too far out. If that ever happens to you, you can click on this. And this allows us to fill all of these layers will fill the screen. And if I click on it, now all of the different layers will fill my screen. And in fact, if you take a look, this, these are all the streets of the Peel region, which is encompassed by this layer here, Single Line Street Network. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull David Suzuki back to the screen, to filling the screen. The final icon up here that you're going to possibly want to know about is this, the Identify tool. And what the Identify tool does is it brings up any um, data that's in behind the image that you see. So if I click on it, you'll see that this little box here shows up. And anything that I click on, it'll now tell me about it. So for example, this is the building of David Suzuki Secondary School. And it's from the buildings layer. Uh, we don't have very much information yet in put into the system on this, but if we click on some others, I could click on that tree and find out that it's a bur oak and it's a deciduous tree and anything else that we might actually have put in. Uh, we don't have anything input to say whether or not it's invasive or not, but we could easily have done this so. All right, uh, a couple other things uh, to do with running the computers here at the school. Um, when everyone's in there working on their computers, they're accessing the network, and sometimes the network slows down a little bit. You kind of have to be patient with the program at that point. Uh, but sometimes if you do too many things on the screen, you can actually confuse the computer as to what you want to do. So, for example, if I click the zoom in, then I zoom out, then I click this button, this, this button, and the whole thing hasn't been redrawn for each of those times, after a while, the computer sometimes gives up. And so what you'll know if it f gives up is a word canceled will be down here in the bottom left-hand corner. If that happens, a really easy solution. All it means is the computer said, I've stopped drawing because you're telling me too much stuff at once. Just come up here to the refresh view icon. If you click it, it goes through the whole process of redrawing things. And uh, you know it's drawing because there will be a little globe spinning right here. So if you watch that while I click the refresh button, watch that section there, you'll see the globe spins. That means my computer's doing something and it's drawing all the layers. So it hasn't frozen if that is spinning. All right, that's about it for now. Uh, you're, there will be more tutorials that you will want to watch, and those are on specific ways to actually do the different things that you need to do in ArcGIS. Uh, whenever you're stuck and you're not sure what to do, you can always watch those tutorials and then maybe even ask your teachers to clarify what's going on.